In this video, we study how to compute range of a function. In the previous video, we had studied about how to find out the domain of a function. This is the continuation of the previous video with the concept of range. Let's see three examples and let's get started. The function given to me, the first one would be fx is equal to x square plus 1. Focus on x square addition with 1. Now what is range? Range is basically what values of the function can be obtained by putting certain domain values into it. Now x square plus 1 means that what value should I get out of this would be the range. See this x square term. The square function has the minimum value as what? Can the square function be negative? No, not at all. It has to be either 0 or greater than 0. As to why so, then you can focus on this. If I have any negative number, say minus 1, minus 1 square would become 1. If I have some other number, say 2, 2 square would become 4. If I have 0, 0 square would become 0. Do we see something? That any negative number would give me a square as positive. And positive numbers will always have the square as positive only. Minimum positive number having the square as positive would be 0. 0 square is 0, 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4. Negative number square is also positive. So the minimum value that can be obtained out of x square, which is necessary to find out the range, is 0. So 0 is included, so I have a big bracket for it. And this 0 can continue till any number. Bigger numbers will have bigger squares. Smaller numbers will have smaller squares. So this can continue till infinity. I can have the square of x square till infinity. But the answer should not be left only as per x square. I have 1 also in consideration. So the range is obtained by solving these two things. Now 0 plus 1 will give me 1. And infinity plus 1. What is infinity? Infinity is basically a very big number which cannot be reached. So a very big number with 1 added to it will again give me that big number only. And one more thing which we need to consider is that since infinity is not a bounded number, so it is better and advisable not to use big brackets with it. We have to use a small open bracket with it. And here also that is why it would be a small open bracket and this is my answer for the range for the first question. What new thing we learned here? We learned here that infinity is a very big number which is unbounded. So we should not be using a capital big bracket. It should indeed have a small bracket associated with it. Let's see the second problem for the range. If the function n to w, n is natural number set, w is whole number set. fx is equal to 2x plus 3 is the given function and he asks me to find the range. What is the range of this function? So if you look at this function again, this function would have the range depending upon what values of x do you put in this function. And x is domain. Domain is a natural number. Natural number starts from 1, 2, 3 and so on. So the values of x would start from 1, 2, 3 and so on. When x is equal to 1, the value of fx or y is what? It is 2 into 1 plus 3, which is 2 1s are 2 plus 3, which is 5. When x is equal to 2, since it is natural numbers, we have to start the counting from 1. y is equal to 2 into 2 plus 3. That is 2 to the 4 plus 3. 4 plus 3 is 7. When x is equal to 3, y has what values? y is 2 into 3 plus 3, which is 9. 
and this list continues because we do not know as to what ending do natural numbers have natural numbers are infinite in number and the range should have been a whole number yes these all are whole numbers so the answer to this question is the set of y values which we have obtained by putting different values in the domain so the answer is 5 7 9 and so on this is the answer to the question of range let's see the third and the last problem for understanding range this problem has trigonometric functions involved in it which are cosine x that is cos x and sin x which is sin x for understanding purpose we already know that these functions as we talked in the domain questions also have some restrictions on them for domain sin x and cos x can be engaged with any of the real values but for range they are limited let us see how to solve this had this question be of any other mathematical operation other than subtraction the question would have been easier and simpler to do but here in this question we need to find out and do some manipulation in order to get this solving what if I multiply and divide the question by root 2? Does that create any difference? You can do both the things. You can either divide by root 2 or you can directly multiply by root 2 and divide in the bracket in, inside. So what do we do? We multiply by root 2 here and we divide by root 2 in the bracket inside. So the question has changed to root 2 upon 1 or you can simply write root 2 cos x by root 2 minus sin x by root 2. Why have we done this? What is the reason that we are doing the manipulation? Because range cannot be found out directly plain manner. Now root 2 upon 1 means root 2, cos x upon root 2 and sin x upon root 2. What value of cos gives me 1 by root 2 which is cos 45 degrees so cos pi by 4 cos x similarly what value of sine would give me root 2 in denominator it would be sine 45 so it is sine pi by 4 into sine of x let's make the space a bit more available to write sine x properly so it is sine x now a formula has been made cos a cos b minus sin a sin b that is cos a plus b which we have already studied so cos a plus b is the formula for cos a cos b minus sin a sin b for those who don't know the formula i will write here cos a cos b minus sin a sin b is what is cos a plus b this is the formula and this can be written in a box form so that you remember the formula this is the formula let's get back to the question now the question was this now we ultimately had to find out what we ultimately had to find out the range and cos x and sin x always have the range as minus 1 to 1 that we know already so that means this question which is fx has been changed somewhat i know that cos x or cos of any angle has the range as minus 1 to 1 only this bracket has the range as minus 1 to 1 but for this bracket if the range is minus 1 to 1 what if i multiply by root 2 so my answer changes the range of fx the range of fx becomes root 2 into minus 1 which is minus root 2 and root 2 into plus 1 which is plus root 2 so these were the th three questions on computing the range of a function 